hearing you uh, saying that, uh, observing that the Holocaust started off with um, these euthanasia camps, um, I'm kind of reassured that the comments reported at the weekend about euthanasia booths were a kind of satire um, uh, about uh, sort of attitudes to ageing. Uh, were you surprised at how that's been kind of taken seriously as a, as a proposal almost? <coughs> no, I mean it quite seriously. It's utopian, of course. It'll never happen, um, or not for a very long time. Uh, no, I'm, I'm a fan of euthanasia. Um, and don't forget, I'm you know, not too far off that myself. And I do think it's existentially far more terrifying. I mean, the idea of someone helping me on my way as I'm screaming my th way through the last three months with a shot of morphine is nothing like as frightening as the idea that you can't get out. Um, and, you know, when you're, say, 70, you don't feel like walking under a bus, you know. Uh, <laughs> you know there's got to be something easier than that. Um, so I, I'm, I'm quite serious about that, and also what hasn't... And it's a, it's, I do think it's a remnant, uh, a vestige of, of Christian belief. I mean, there's a whole book about how shot through the American Constitution is with religious belief. Uh, you, know, um, you wouldn't believe how much of it is conditioned by religion. And I think there's a bit of that, but I, we're now in an emergency that my generation, the generation less and less affectionately known as the baby boomers, the baby boom generation, is going to be a curse on society of, of a magnitude that demographers say is quite new. Nothing, no, no demographic distortion has ever will ever approach what we're now about to have. And I've read, the trouble with those quotes in the paper was that they're taken from my novel that's about to come out, and they're novelistic, um, satirical. But it's, it's absolutely true, and it's quoted in the book that um, a, a serious economist saying, for at least a generation, the business of government will be transferring money from the young to the old. Uh, the young have one child. We come from a generation of two or three children. They're all getting old at the same time. This is known as, in America as the, as the third rail issue that no politician can mention. It's like stepping on the live rail in a, in a, in a subway station. You're instantly electrocuted. <laughs> um, it's, such a, it's such a huge distortion of uh, demography is about to descend on us. They call it, they call it, it's not my phrase, the silver tsunami. Uh, nothing like it in history. And he, you know, hideous oldsters like me, very soon, are going to be stinking up the clinics and the restaurants. And, and there will be an extremely resentful younger generation. Uh, I, I can understand why. And uh, I imagine a sort of civil war. Of, you know, with chronological cleansing. In my, in my happier fantasies, I see myself as a warrior in this war. <laughs> in a wheelchair with a GPS system, <laughs> doing great damage to the young. Uh, but I, I mean, but actually, my you know, temperamentally, I feel I, I would be, you know, when it gets rough, I, I would love a little booth. Um, you know, with a martini and a medal, um, and the lethal injection. Uh, you know, you see, I, I don't see any point in sticking around for a minute longer when, once your mind is gone. I think it's, it's, it's pitiful. And, uh, and without, you know, hum to be human is to have a certain amount of dignity, and I don't see that dignity uh, in the demented. Um, they don't see it either. I mean, Iris Murdoch and Saul Bellow are the two people I know who succumb to Alzheimer's. And as John Bailey, Iris Murdoch's husband, says in his, one of his three books on this subject, that, um, that there's something, a terrible shift happens once the disease has really taken hold. You have, I don't know if you've seen that film, um, Iris, which I found absolutely sort of shattering. 
I mean, there are these moments as it approaches where she's saying, what's that word for... And he says brightly, well, all words are a bit like that when you take them by surprise, aren't they? And, um, and Judy Dench, marvellous performance, just sort of looks away and you see terrible fear in her face. But then, you know, three months later, she's watching Teletubbies. And it's a good day. You know, there she is, happily in front of te Teletubbies. Not in, in nameless, unreasoning terror of she doesn't know what. And he says what happens is that um, the disease, as it progresses, cancels the awareness of loss. So you don't know anymore what you once were and what you could do with your mind. And uh, there are many ways in which a life can slip into the negative. And the mild negative, perhaps you would endure the acute negative. Um, I don't think anyone should be asked to do. I think it's... It's unworthy of, of a human being to have to go through that. I mean, I mean, just to separate it from the Nazi program, there was no choice there. There was not even, and it, it wasn't the old. It wasn't the old. It was, um, it was anyone with any deformity or disability. Uh, the blind, the deaf, the, uh, the misshapen, as well as uh, malingerers and grumblers. Once it got really going, Lifton calls the period after it got going wild euthanasia, the doctors take over. Um, where it was just anyone at all who wasn't um, a strapping Aryan. And they didn't have any choice about it. I think the subtext of uh, what you're trying to say, you're trying to give a, a gross uh, misrepresentations of uh, the young ones. And uh, I would like to assure all our old ones, our senior <laughs> citizens, that uh, we are not all that uh, morally monstrous as to uh, start orchestrating a uh, civil war against you in the next 10 to 15 years. Um, the thing is just that uh, history has a way of surprising doomsayers. For instance, look at uh, uh, Reverend Malthus, who said, I mean, some 300 years ago then, that the rate of population growth is uh, less than uh, the rate of food production. That uh, something has to be done if uh, we don't want to have uh, serious famine. And look at what the Industrial Revolution did to the production of food. So there's a way, there's a way history or life is going to have, uh, surprise us. I, I don't think uh, um, we are morally monstrous uh, as to that, do that. Then the other thing is just that you're trying to separate um, 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 this uh, issue of uh, ethani uh, perspective of Oswege uh, from the comment you just made about, uh, you made about the old people. I don't think they are separate. They are the same thing. Because you're saying that uh, um, in Oswege, in Oswege they, didn't, they didn't have any choice. You understand that uh, in this case, it's a choice action. I don't see them as separate. They belong to the same moral monstrosities. During the Oswich, they defined all those they eventually killed as defective, which is the same thing you are talking about as regards old people. No, no, no. When they were doing euthanasia, they, they, they said that life unworthy of life, unworthy mouths. In, in Auschwitz, they were Jewish. Um, that was all that was wrong with them. Or they were gypsies, or they were homosexuals, and the other cat categories. I mean, I think it's quite simple. This point was made by A.N. Wilson in The Independent. He said, uh, those who believe in this, you know, the sacred nature of human life and believe in the Christian doctrine that, that life is a gift from God and, and not ours to dispose of, um, he said, those people should be should, be, should ask for and be issued with the equivalent of donor card, kidney donor cards. So that in whatever kind of mess they get into physically and mentally, they will have the privilege of screaming their way through the last few months and no one will be allowed to lay a finger on them because for re religious reasons they want to you know, live until the last drop of breath is suctioned out of them. Well, they can do that. Um, 
I don't pretend that it's going to be easy to administer and that um, there's going to be a lot of uh, invigilation needed, but I, I think, <laughs> I think that the, the choice to die is, is a, a noble and dignified uh, human privilege that we should all have. <laughs>